And now for our weekly news segment. Hey, everybody. Hey, Tony. Hi, How's it going? Man? Good. How are you guys? Good, man. Good. How you doing? Good. Um, we have a lot to um, talk about. A lot of big stuff, actually, this week. And um, some of which are quite concerning. So we'll try to get through it as um, much as we can. Yeah, try to try to run through it all. Uh, we don't have to go super detailed into each topic because we're going to bring up the special guests and then we'll, we'll probably touch on a couple of these larger topics. But if we could at least kind of cover the gamut of what's going on out there. Yeah, so most of we have big news and then we have a couple small ones. So I'm just going to go one by one. And then, like you said, we're just going to have like a quick overview. Uh, this is the first thing. So um, this is crazy. Essentially, this is going to be a form from the IRS in which you need to, um, it's designed to collect your ID and detailed transaction data at scale from brokers. Um, the form captures some unsurprising data points such as date acquired, date sold, proceeds, and cost of pieces of crypto assets sold. So the IRS wants more and more information when it comes to your uh, crypto and your dealings with it. This information is needed and helpful for the taxpayer to complete their crypto tax filings. Yes, however, the collection and reporting of the following additional data points to the IRS at scale could lead to major privacy and security concerns. They want a lot of um, information on this one. So, um, yeah, I mean, do, do we know if uh, if this is like a rumor or if this is like a real form that's coming out? Um, I, I haven't done my due diligence on this. As far as I understand is that this actually has been issued and it's going to start in 2025, the 1st of January. And so, so I, I'm not I, really sure, but as far as mm -hmm, I understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll bring that up later in the discussion if, if anybody has more, more details on that, but, uh, it's, 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 it's related, it's related to the, I'd say the attack. Um, so IRS kind of cir circling the wagons here, effectively require potentially requiring people to, um, you know, uh, report all their crypto holdings essentially is what they're looking to do and report all their crypto transactions. And essentially brokers like, uh, centralized exchanges, DeFi, you know, um, so they'll be required to generate this form for each sale transaction and submit that info to the IRS. Um, so it's a certain DeFi exchanges and wallets. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, then we have uh, the Senate passes Biden signed surveillance bill despite contentious debate over privacy concerns. Uh, <laughs> so what is interesting about this one, let me see if I can find Friday. Um, yeah, so they came up with the le legislation on a late Friday night, and by Saturday, they've already gone through with it. Um, essentially, this is going to be a bill which is only for two years instead of five, which is going to um, allow the government to, to spy on you, essentially. And um, so they even they so they, they said that they made some modifications to it to address past abuses by the FBI. Um, and essentially that is not going to be used against, uh, the citizens. It's just a critical tool, tool for safeguarding. National next to doubt. Yeah. Um, and yes, yeah, in the past. So yeah, that was, that was more big, big news this week of the government increasing its, its ability to, or, uh, it's, it's quote unquote legal ability to surveil us citizens extending FISA and that passed and it was and it was uh signed by Biden and it's interesting because they call they call this one of the United States most vital intelligence collection tools <laughs> um, uh, yeah it's 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 basically a workaround way for the government to spy on citizens without the need for for a warrant is effectively what that is it's interesting how some of them were against it because it was for a five-year period but then when they change it to a two-year period some of them they, they they thought yeah okay that's that's better so i'll vote for it now well two years or five years is still bad no matter what it is um 
Don't we actually have a couple more articles on this? But this is with this is what the situation is. Uh, this is Senator Ron uh, widens floor speech on a terrifying provision in the uh, FISA Section 702 bill that will virtually. This good, yeah, this is a good video to play. Kind of, uh, I think he gives kind of a good summary of the implications of what what basically is being passed here, the mm -hmm. FISA extension. If you want to play that. Yep. So essentially, it's going to make virtually everyone a spy. Uh, so let's go ahead and watch it. I just read to the Senate means that if you have access to any communications, the government can force you to help it spy. That means anybody with access to a server, a wire, a cable box, a Wi-Fi router, a phone, or a computer. So think for a moment about the millions of Americans who work in buildings and offices in which communications are stored or passed through. After all, every office building in America has data cables running through it. And the people are not just the engineers who install, maintain, and repair our communications infrastructure. There are countless others who could be forced to help the government spy including those who clean offices and guard buildings. If this provision is enacted, the government can deputize any of these people against their will and force them, in effect, to become what amounts to an agent for Big Brother. For example, by forcing an employee to insert a USB thumb drive into a server at an office they clean or guard at night. This can all happen without any oversight whatsoever. The FISA court won't know about it. The Congress won't know about it. Americans who are handed these directives will be forbidden from talking about it. Unless they can afford high-priced lawyers with security clearances who know their way around the FISA court, they will have no recourse at all. Wow. And this is nothing new. It happened in the past. So I highly recommend people read 1984 by George Orwell, because that's in the direction in which we're going. And then there's another book, which I highly recommend everybody read, The Gulag Archipelago. So essentially, this has happened. And um, any single person in the Soviet Union uh, could essentially take you to the Gulag. Could be your neighbor, could be your taxi driver. Um, what will usually happen, for example, you'll be in a bar or uh, the feeder and then somebody would come up to you and they would say hey I, I know you and then they would mention you your name and then you wouldn't know who they are and then they would ask you to come come outside for a little bit and then they'll go ahead and take you in the gulag for no reason um so yeah now spying is essentially encouraged by the government it's, it's encouraged to spy on your friends your neighbors and everybody uh, which is crazy the way that we're going uh especially it's just going back to communism but way worse, 1984, because now we have technology as well. So now we have you have no way to escape. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, crazy. Uh, then we have this is a separate topic, but 82% of wallets that hold Bitcoin cannot move right now due to high fees. <laughs> um, and this one okay so we'll go over this one a little bit but people criticize monero so we talked about the government a little bit bitcoin i think we have a couple more stuff on bitcoin but let's talk about monero a little bit people criticize monero for a couple of stuff first thing delisted from major exchanges that's that's actually a good thing because it is expected that a true freedom money would be blocked from the legacy system that's what's happening to monero um and yeah we have low liquidity and all this stuff but it's becoming more stable and then if if Monero persists, even though it's hard to get and even grows, then that's the true freedom currency, not Bitcoin or, or the other ones. Uh, spending lock, due to privacy concerns, you can spend XMR you've just received. You have to wait for 20 minutes. Also true, but it's not an issue in most cases. In real life, people rarely do this. Uh, long for sync time. Um, yeah, so he goes into that. Not that many places to spend Monero. Well, it's the same for Bitcoin and USDT, but actually, uh, you have more places to spend Monero in if you get the Cake Wallet app. Um, you can get gift cards using Monero. And now you can buy stuff from any place. Adidas, uh, Starbucks, I think Nike, uh, all these places. 
So you can use your Monero if they don't accept it directly to get gift cards. You can get Visa cards. So you can live pretty well on, on Monero using the, the gift cards. Is it optimal? Mm, I mean, uh, you would want to use Monero, but it's still a really good thing for now until we get more people to accept it. Uh, not very accessible beyond the black market, very niche. Uh, <laughs> XMR should be positioned as a dark net mark a dark net money, the fact that it's used in the dark net only underlines it's better privacy. If they trust it with their life, then it's good enough for you because um, they need tools that are good enough to protect their life because if they're caught with what they do, then they will face um, very, uh, very bad things. Uh, development is slow. <laughs> There's actually a lot of stuff happening in, in Monero as, as uh, we've been discussing for the past couple of weeks. Um, the multi-sig is cumbersome, true, but it's a wallet side UX issue, which will get resolved at some point. Um, no smart contracts, depends on how you look at it. No smart contracts equals smaller attack service. Its name is a Bitcoin. Um, so it goes into a lot of stuff. Infinite supply, that's that's another thing that people like to bring up about the tell mission. But then they don't think about miners in the future and what's going to happen to, to mining and the reward system. And th there's a lot of things to talk about when it comes to the Tell mission that is really interesting, but it's it's all really well made. It's not just an infinite supply that it's, you know, doesn't work like that. Um, yeah, so there's there's personal value, but like most cryptos, Monero, in my honest opinion, is the further away from being a positive scheme. Yes, personal value. Monero is holding uh, its value pretty good. I would say, and um, the ultimate form of money should be the store of value as well. And the fact that uh, Monero is not on a lot of uh, central exchanges and stuff like that makes the price more stable. And the fact that it's persisting and people see value for, from it, then it's gaining um, um, stability when it comes to price. So it's not fluctuating uh, a lot it's been pretty stable so uh there, there's and there's a lot of stuff that people talk about but these are just a few few points um yeah so monero goes beyond privacy it goes there's so many nuances when it comes to monero that are amazing uh, such as telemissions such as dynamic block size um and all this stuff the fees going down the more you, the people use it a lot of stuff uh luke so luke um luke posted he retweeted something from Everywhere Finance. So they made um, XMRT project, the wrapped version of Monero, which will be available on a dozen chains. Um, and essentially, a bridge to freedom, privacy, and liquidity. Essentially, what Luke said. Um, this is near a near complete lack of info on how they'll actually achieve transparency. No saying reserve proofs exist isn't sufficient. And now they'll actually create a security custody environment for the Monero. Ah, it's the way. This will be really interesting to actually talk about when everybody else hops on about this project. Uh, <laughs> proof of rock technology from j -Pop. That's funny. T for transparent. Um, okay, so let's move on. Why Monero is free to money? This is another post um, about Monero. It will be easier to support something like Bitcoin Cash or Litecoin, Untraceable said. Both work, they both offer privacy tools, are listed on the exchange, and are not subject, most importantly, to the regulatory risk Monero is. So why Monero when there are easier options? And then he goes into detail, uh, chain analysis, and they've never been able to break into, into Monero, none of them so far. Uh, and then um, during the block size wars, we were promised lightning would scale, um, will solve scaling issues and high fees. We continued believing Bitcoin was our best chance at freedom money. We wasted a decade. This actually goes into Bitcoin and the downfalls of it when it comes to lightning and um, scalability. And he talks about that. Bitcoin did not scale. Lightning failed. No letter to offer privacy and none of the privacy enhancements proposed for Bitcoin were ever implemented um this is john carvalho as and then he talks about the design of bitcoin and that the lightning network is a joke and um actually i'm gonna play this because this one is really interesting and then we'll go we'll go on with the other things 
degree of complexity and fragility of lightning and, and especially for the use case that people intend for it, which is like end users running their own nodes um, and even and even more crazy end users have running their own routing nodes. Um, it's just very, very fragile. And going through that experience just made me realize that the design is kind of a joke. Like we can make it work. Um, we can do our best. But it, like all of the kind of narratives that came with it in the first couple of years were were really exaggerated. You know, like things like Lightning is going to kill Visa and mm -hmm. everybody will be using Lightning. And there are a lot of issues with scaling it economically. There are a lot of issues with uh, dealing with all of the multiple implementations and incompatibilities. And again, the fragilities causing force closes liquidity management and it just like, goes on and on and on and all of the things that like people that aren't engineers and aren't building these products like even if they, they feel like they fully appreciate the complexity because they like study it a lot they still don't get it like it's and that's the thing so we're gonna have stuff later and then uh, maybe we'll talk about this but he he dealt a lot with lightning and so far i understand that it wasn't easy for him so Lightning, if it's really going to replace Visa and all this stuff, it should be something easy to use, which is actually the most important thing. I mean, one of the most important things. It has to be easily usable by people. Not everybody's going to be technologically wise, and not everybody's going to be interested in, in these things. Like, they just want to use it and have it work. <laughs> and it doesn't. Um, then this is Noel McAfee, chair of philosophy department at Emory University, being uh, arrested. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Is there anything I can do for you right now? Yes, can you call the philosophy department office and tell them I've been arrested? Fill out philosophy department? Yes, call the philosophy department office. I will, I will. What's your... I'm chair of the philosophy department. I got you. This, is, this was interesting. Somebody said one can support the Palestinians without supporting Hamas. Same thing with su supporting Israelis. Um, also, like uh, what was really interesting and shocking. So Yanis Varoufakis, kind of sideline, uh, former minister of finance of Greece. He was actually banned from entering uh, Germany because he talked about, um, and he talks about the economy and um a lot of things he has a lot of interesting books and talks but uh, he talked about Palestinia and other things and he was banned from from germany so the west is going down uh, as a whole and it's um it's sad to see um no this one okay so they're really going at it um uh, so let me look in the comment section a little bit on youtube um, uh, Fox Coit said 52 likes. I hope it gets to 100 soon. <laughs> we hope so too. 58 now, close to 60. Uh, the paper Vigilante said it's most illustrating talking about current supply and min mining emissions. It's less than Bitcoin currently nominal terms. Um, then we have Finari saying, I think XMR is real money. You just need real decks or daily use case. Interesting. Okay, let's go back to this now. Uh, so they're, <laughs> Untraceable said, uh, they're really going all out recently. They're trying to close the gates uh, before any more of their herd escapes. True. Their CBDC launch must be near and close. Oh, that's that's going to be interesting. Um, yeah, so U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren writes a letter to the DOJ claiming cryptocurrency is a payment of choice for child sexual abuse materials. Um, you know what also these people use? Forks and knives and plates and other stuff. That's like, it's not the tool that is bad, but the person behind it. So, um, yes, there's people that use Monero for uh, nefarious activities, but guess what? There's a lot of good people watching our show and not, and of course, beyond that are using it for good things, for benevolent things, helping people, donating, and all this stuff. So, but it's, so these things just don't make any sense. But um, Elizabeth Warren, she wrote, she took her precious time to write this letter saying we are writing to express our concerns. <laughs> yeah, she's very concerned about this one. Regarding the use of crypt cryptocurrency in, in the illegal trade of child sexual abuse material and to obtain information about the tools need needed by the Department of Justice and Department of Homeland Security to end this illicit trade. I agree. I would want it to end. Also, everybody would want it to end, but it 
it's it's just going for the tool and it's just not wise the, the way they're doing it and it's a clear attack on tony I, I see we got we do have every we have seth we have mike and we have arctic they're ready to jump on uh awesome. so you want to just kind of quickly run through the rest yeah so we get okay so we're halfway in i'm just gonna go quickly over those and then um after they talk maybe we can go over it again on like specific ones um okay so this one phoenix wallet basically is going to be removed from us uh, app store um due to recent um events in, in the government uh this is them saying that they're going to remove phoenix wallet from the us app store and probably we'll go over it again later uh samurai wallet they're going to discuss some stuff on that um now then we have wasabi wallet oh no uh, zk snacks is now blocking its residents and citizens um which is crazy then um disposed by by uh by seth on uh, cryptocurrency money transmitting services um that are not registered as money service businesses i assume we're going to talk about this now um then samurai and essentially these last two are just about samurai um devs which were arrested and addicted on money laundering charges so um this was a new section um now we're gonna have seth and everybody jump on and uh probably after we're gonna go over you could this. uh you could you could play this one the, the chris black uh video where he's interviewing samurai let's play that and then we'll jump to the uh special guests sounds good should, should i put the whole three minutes oh yeah go ahead and play that okay what do you think are the odds that that you are going to get the the tornado cash treatment at some point in the future like what do you think of the odds of that and i'm just wondering if you think it's an inevitability in a way or if you think it's it's of a low likelihood it sounds like you're more on the low likelihood side well i think that if things change and there's a clear violation of the law the law changes i mean and we didn't we didn't change and we were violating the law then yeah i'd expect it i don't think we're violating the law so i can't imagine why they would come and uh you know and do that and, it, and if they did then again we do pay lawyers for lawyers for a reason we have them on retainer um mm -hmm. you know we'll fight it obviously but that's what you do when when you're you're charged with something you didn't do you fight it and you hope for the best uh, i'm not going right. to live in fear like i'm not going to do this because oh they might they might come after me for it well yeah, that means i might be doing something i might be on this something well, I, i'm more concerned than you are about this it seems like <laughs> which is interesting but why do you do this work knowing what's at stake and knowing what the risks are like, why do you want to keep going? When I got into Bitcoin, I mean, I got in hard, right? Like, not like, you know, the, the brain dead idiot laser eyes that you find on Twitter today. Like, I, I came in hard on an ideological perspective. And again, this is pre-Ethereum, pre-Monero. This is pre-all. It was just Bitcoin. And Bitcoin was all there is. Um, and... You know, I'm still into the promises that that Bitcoin offers, um, though more jaded, <laughs> of course. Um, but, you know, I'm still ideologically really. There's a strong passion there for for what Bitcoin can offer and I think does offer if you're able to, you know, utilize it in a certain way and you're able to 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 you know use the tools and extricate yourself somewhat from the system it, it, the the promise is immense and building the software to make what i want to see happen there's nothing there's nothing quite like that you know really mm -hmm. uh so I, I i and and the fact that it's used and and enjoyed and you know an essential tool for so many people more than i ever thought um, you know, I just, yeah, like I wouldn't, I, one, I wouldn't want to stop doing it just because it's so interesting and fun. Uh, but two, 
like I've never, I've never since, since I was really small, I, I've never been good with people telling me, no, you can't do that. You have to do this. I, I kind of, if I want to do something, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. Um, and that's the same with this. So I just, it's, it's just the reality of it. I hope nothing like that happens. If, if something like that ha- does happen, I'm prepared to deal with it and, and fight it and, and think that, you know, um, we'll be able to fight it hopefully uh, if, if it does happen, but I don't think it will. Uh, I don't think it's, 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 it's highly likely. I think it's possible, but not highly likely. Wow. So it's kind of chilling. Not to All right. Time. Yeah, that, that is kind of chilling. Um, I think it's, it's a, it's a good segue to mm-hmm. the guests. Let's, let's, let's take it away. Tux, you want to do uh, run the guest segment? Let's bring everybody up. Tony, thank yep. you, man. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yep. Thank you as always, Tony.